Hey guys, and welcome back to RotarySwing.com. I'm your instructor, Chris Tyler. And today we're gonna to be discussing a topic that's brought up by a lot of our students, and that's how far should we stand from the golf ball, and does it change from one club to the next? So I'm gonna be showing you a simple way to make sure that your setup position is in a perfect spot every single time so that you can start playing more consistent golf. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys, so I know a lot of us have struggled in the past trying to figure out how far away from the golf ball we should be standing. And I'm going to give you one really simple checkpoint in this video that's going to help you get into a consistent setup every single time. And it's really important that you understand one thing here, that we're never going to change anything in our setup position to accommodate the length of the club. The only thing that's going to change is the amount of angle to my spine. So what I mean there is, is that you can see that my, my angle of my spine coming up off my pelvis here it's just going to change just a little bit based on the length of the club. There's no drastic other changes here. The ultimate end goal, what you're looking for, no matter the club in your hand, is to make sure that our hands and arms are relaxed. Also, we want to make sure that we're anchored to the ground. Those are two really important factors. But again, we're not going to go into more into the depth as to why we want to start with our hands and arms relaxed or, or how we're going to get anchored. We just want to give you a checkpoint here that's going to help you get set up perfectly. Okay, so. I've got a seven iron here and I've got a wedge and I've also got a driver. And again, you're not gonna see much change to my setup from one of these clubs to the next. I just wanted to demonstrate that the length of the club is just gonna ultimately affect the angle to my spine. So what I want you to do here is I want you to go ahead and stand straight up and down and I just want you to hinge forward slowly, but I want you to keep your legs locked into a straight position. And as you see, I'm hinging here. You can see that my hips are going back and my chest is going over the ball. So I'm just gonna hinge forward slowly, and now I can see the golf ball. Now, one of the things that I want you to be very conscious of is because our shoulders bear a lot of mass, is making sure that when you're hinging forward that your shoulders don't start to round. Okay, that's gonna make it very hard for you to rotate properly in your golf swing, and can also make you look like you have a little bit of a crammed up position with your hands and arms. So I'm gonna hinge forward slowly, and once I feel like I've got myself enough over the golf ball, I wanna make sure that my hands and arms hang freely. Okay, so you can see here, my hands and arms are hanging down freely from the golf ball. I'm not gonna go ahead and push my arms out to get to this golf ball because now I'm starting with tension in my hands and my arms. And if I've pushed my hands and arms out away from my body, chances are I'm gonna have a very flat and rounded swing plane. And vice versa, if I get myself really cramped up, it's gonna be very hard for me not to go ahead and pick the club up or not to rotate my body very early to get out of the way. So again, the goal is, is just to make sure that my hands and arms are hanging freely from my shoulder line. Now, a couple of checkpoints I want you to have here is that when you take your knee flex, you only want the back of the knee to be over the center of the ankle. You don't want to get too squatty in your knees because what that's going to cause you to do is get more of that roundness from your thoracic spine up. So you can see that if I got my knees flexed here, my hands and arms are hanging straight down, I have very little space for my hands and my thighs here, okay? So what you want to do is just make sure you're standing tall in your knees, your hips are going to be back a good way, so Get your tush to go back out behind your heels. Just a little bit of knee flex. And once you know that your hands and arms are hanging freely from your body without having to press them up, push the club out, then you know you're in a position where you can start shifting your weight and rotating your body. Okay, so again, the ultimate goal here is just to make sure our hands and arms are hanging freely. And now what you're gonna see is, is as I go to a longer club, I'm still gonna go through the same processes, okay? So I'm gonna hinge forward, Slowly, hands and arms are hanging freely. Now, if you look here, this, this is the one checkpoint that you guys can use at home, is take your right hand off the golf club. And what you wanna make sure of is that the width of your hand fits between the butt end of the club and your body. So you can see that the width fits just perfectly here. If you notice that it's too far away, then chances are, and you can fit three hands in there, then you've gotta make sure that you're not pressing your arms out away from your body. You make sure that you have these little subtle checkpoints in line. So again, hands and arms need to hang freely. Just a little bit of knee flex. If it's a longer club, you're gonna notice that my spine might be a little bit more vertical here, but you can still see that my hips are back a good ways. And now you're ready to start shifting and start rotating. Now, same thing with a wedge, because it's gonna be a little bit shorter of a club. You're gonna notice that I have to hinge forward a little bit more here. Still same checkpoint here. Hands and arms are gonna be hanging freely. I can take my right hand off the club and I can fit the width of my hand between the butt end of my club and my body. So that's a great checkpoint for you guys to use at home. When your hands and arms are hanging off of your shoulder line, just double check, take the right hand off, 
If your width fits in between there and you've got proper knee flex, then you're ready to rock and roll. Okay guys, so thanks again for tuning in to today's video at rotaryswing.com. Again, I'm your instructor, Chris Tyler. And I wanna let you know, I've got a great bonus video here that's gonna to talk to you about one of the most commonly overlooked features of the setup position that every single tour player has that you might not have in your own golf swing, and it's called axis tilt. I'm gonna show you and walk you through a step-by-step -step process on how to get your setup into a perfect spot every single time. So if you wanna see that video, go ahead and click the link in the description below. It'll take you over to our website where you can sign up for a free membership. You'll watch that video in its entirety, no problem, no questions asked. Also, do me a favor, if you like this video, go ahead and click the like button down there for me below. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those up and I'll help you out as best I can. Also, do me a favor and subscribe to our channel by clicking on this button on my hand now. That way, anytime we put out any of our latest free content, that you get updates on it. Now let's get out there, let's play some of our best golf. But the big mistake that we see from a lot of golfers is, is that in order to achieve their axis tilt, what they're doing is they're just leaning their spine away from the target and they're getting most of their weight preloaded into their trail side. Okay, so you can see here that I got most of my weight over here. You can see that my right shoulder